All right, we are live. Today is year 2017, still October 21st. And <laughs> we have there our Saturday webinar with Brooke Allison. Hey, Brooke. Hi, Max. Hi, everyone. And we have with us April, Christine, Kari, Salesh, Stephanie, and Tran. Hey, everybody. The announcements are we are back to activity. We are starting our um, classes. Uh, the next class will be taught only by Jim, no me. It will be Galactic Reiki. So it would be Takur teaching, actually. It would be Jim and Takur, not Jim and Max, it would be Jim and Takur. And it is uh, six hours, three hours on Saturday, November 25th, and three hours on Sunday, November 26th. And the price is $100. And the decision, the, the time was just set yesterday, so I will finish the registration page today and come today tomorrow and start registering at hucola.org and the february workshop the second workshop we have is starting february 1st in sedona it is 575 dollars and registration is open uh, we have now registered eight people including teachers out of 24 maximum so we need your registration soon and it will be fun uh, join us and if you can take a risk of registering and if you have to cancel you can cancel later we, we are pretty flexible in cancellations but we need to reserve two more airbnb houses so we have a total three and and uh, it will be all in walking distance and we will uh, have fun in sedona uh brooke do you have uh, do you, are you still doing private sessions? Yes, I am. All right. How people find you? They can find me right now through Facebook only. Mm -hmm. My name on Facebook is Brooke Alyssa Underwood. I'm working on my website right now, and I've officially shut it off for the season. So contact me on Facebook, private message, or email, of course, at brookealyssa at gmail. Com. Thank you. Um, what is that? What else is happening? What are your developments? Hmm. So much to say. I have taken a lot of time recently to finish up my yoga 200 hour at the yoga teacher training and I'm just finishing up some of my requirements. I'm also working on a couple articles uh, to publish about yoga right now. Yay. Yeah, we watched your progress with yoga training. Good job. Thank you so much. And thank you for everyone. And where are you located these days? I'm in Ashland, Oregon. Oh, wow. Um, do you have any more announcements? It. I think we are good. All right. I'll do a little more women and uh, I invite you to go channel if you like. It's an early morning lullaby there, Max. Thank you. <laughs> Well, welcome everyone. Before I begin, I love to guide us all collectively into our bodies, 
into the present moment, into our hearts. So I invite you to go on a sort of meditative, grounding, protecting, cleansing, and opening the beginning here. My volume just went out. Can you hear me still? You're good, you're good. Okay, there we go. So everyone just find your sit bones. That's the bony part of the bottom of what you're sitting on. Find your feet touching Mother Earth. Find any surface areas of your body making contact with whatever you're sitting on or standing on. And just breathe into observation of where you are being held by Mother Earth right now. Start to bring awareness to your face. Start to bring awareness to your eyes, your eyebrows, your jaw, your nose, your lips, earlobes, top of the head, back of the skull. And just begin to release, 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 release any energy that is not serving you, any stress frequencies or programs that are not in the highest good. Just start dissolving stress. Dissolve all the stress from your body, your sacred vessel. And imagine these sort of stress bubbles just falling gracefully down to Mother Earth as she composts this stress and continue to release, release, release and begin to relax to relax, to relax. Taking a moment to notice your heart chakra. This five dimensional portal Notice any colors you receive. Notice any sensations, any vibrations, numbness, emptiness. It is all welcome here. Breathe into your heart chakra. The center that meets our lower and our upper chakras and an alchemical cauldron of love, compassion, tenderness. Authentic humanness. Connect with your heart chakra. Even placing your hand in the center of your chest. Breathe.
Imagine now the central solar sun beaming above your eighth chakra, which is about a foot above your seventh chakra. Imagine this bright yellow, orange, solar activating energy coming down from the galaxy and blessing each one of your chakras, cleansing, but first releasing any energies that are stuck, releasing, cleansing, and purifying, starting from your seventh, your crown chakra, using the solar sun energy all throughout your body to release, cleanse, and purify your subtle energy, sacred body fields. As you do this, also imagine bringing back any energy you have spread into the cosmos right now, any thought forms, any conversations you've had recently or earlier today, any technology energies, any family energies, media. Just start to bring back your holy energy body. Start to call back those pieces that you've extended, your heart. Call them back in. And continue with this golden solar sun energy to release, cleanse, and purify your chakras, releasing to Mother Earth, allowing her to compost energies that are not serving you. She receives it all with unconditional love. Now we're going to use Mother Earth energy, imagining a shade of green coming from Mother Earth, sort of like a vine or a rope. And just imagine this vine and this rope sort of acting like a double helix coming up from the bottom of your feet wrapping around your legs, your torso, your upper body, your arms, your neck, your skull. And imagining this green double helix of Mother Earth connecting you with your ancestral DNA connecting you to holy healing epigenetics of love.
And imagine this green double helix now meeting with solar, sun, masculine energy at your eighth chakra. And imagine in your third eye, this alchemy of mother earth and father sun energy coming together as one. Now use this energy to bless your entire body, your entire emotional, energetic, spiritual, physical, astral fields. Imagine a color that resonates with you today that is not brown or black. Using this color to bless your entire auric field, creating a sort of bubble of love, bubble of sacred protection, and bubble of sovereignty within the cosmos as you are a sovereign being here on the holographic earth plane. Making sure this auric bubble of color surrounds you completely underneath your feet three feet out in every direction of your being. And take a few more conscious cleansing breaths, breathing in this loving force field. And exhaling releasing, breathing in the love and the light, and exhaling, stabilizing. I call in our groups with permission, angelic guides, ascended masters, ancestors, animal, plant, elemental, fey, allies, benevolent beings, those beyond the veil, I care to join us here in this sacred time, in sacred community with one another. I ask Mother Divine to hold us all, imagining a physical nurturing mother behind each and every one of us, holding us, our backs against her bosom, her unconditional loving heart chakra, relaxing into the divine nourishment and nurturance that she has for each and every one of us at all times and also collectively as she holds us all and in particular this group that has joined today.
breathing in to Mother Divine's holy divine love. I ask for the highest healing, the highest alchemical truth. with a smile and with gratitude. Namaste. Namaste. I always like to invite any topics at large to be presented before I begin. So, on my mind, there is um, the desire, strong desire to speak to their other beings directly, to hear the voice, to hear the, to have a conversation. And uh, specifically, I'm very fascinated with angelics and I want to learn angelic language and be able to channel angelic language. Anyone else? Um, hi. Um, I was actually for Jim, for you. I was. I actually, when I was meditating, just recently, I just picked up on your vibrational frequency, and was able to listen in on what you were requesting to the to the angelic realms because I'm morally connected to it. Wow. So I just had a like a transmission from you, like I saw you asking for something or whatever it was. Thank you. So it just shows that there's a lot of it just shows that I can actually it, it actually shows that it is real to know that it's not made up for those who see view the channel or who are new to it uh -huh. that it actually does exist with telepathy or picking up vibrations and frequencies so it's a way to view people just, just like to know that it's not fake thank you Well, let's look into this further. Did you believe in angels as a child, Max? I was obsessed with science fiction, so I was living in a science fiction world. And uh, sometimes angels appeared there, but all my world was whatever was in Russian science fiction. So it was humans traveling other worlds and lots of different uh, types of consciousness there. One of them was uh, clouds, yeah, one of the consciousnesses was clouds. <laughs> Someone is writing, Cody George, how do shifting energies affect psychic abilities? I find some information coming to be very strange lately. So the question is, how the energies around now affect our psychic abilities? I think that will weave into your question about the angels actually kind of so tight. So the shifting energies here on fifth dimensional Mother Earth are indeed infiltrating our psychic bodies. Those in particular who know 
themselves to be highly sensitive beings, empaths, sensitive to energy and sensitive to disharmonious energies, are being asked to go deeper into initiatory realms of different dimensions and different physical challenges as well. Not always, but usually when there's a sort of upgrade happening in the light, the body has to also upgrade in a way. That can mean healing anything from physical ailments to healing interpersonal relationships. Or it could also mean embracing new strategies and new tools of how to be an embodied human. Often the psychic abilities come after we clear karma in our human experience. But we must be conscious of what karmas we are clearing, what karmas are on the table, so to speak, and what challenges we are inhabiting individually in our family lineage, also in our sort of nation lineage, our world lineage, and any of the sort of hybrid lineages if you are part human, part fae, like this channel is, <laughs> or part starseed, part fae, part alien, part human. It just depends but we are constantly being asked to upgrade the heart chakra by means of new strategies to build resilience in the light here on the planet and also in the astral planes. Is there any more on that question? that I can clarify. It is a sort of broad question. There are no more questions. There is a lot of uh, sharings of love. Uh, people send uh, greetings, love and light to all. Um, that's all we have. That's a big So back to this angelic frequency. So when the angelics come, it's a sort of invitation into your higher divine ascended self. Often the ascended masters work alongside the high initiated angelic realm. And so I'm seeing, particularly for you, Max, that you are in this sort of underground cave where there's a pool of water, there's high cave, sort of vaulted ceilings. And you're at the door of this entrance in the cave. And it's an open door, but your intuition is asking you to wait. And before you arrived at this gate, this door in this cave, you were blessed by this large, that still could fit in your hands, but it was this large, golden, shimmery key. And it's 
as if this key has new knowledge and new information and new beginnings for you. But because you're so in tune with your energy and intuitive body, you don't just immediately use this key. You are receiving the blessing of the energy and the frequency of this key. This knowingness that this key is a sort of dharma to the angelic worlds. And so I'm seeing you being very grateful for this auspicious key being blessed for you to hold and to be still with. The angelic realms do have a message of stillness that you can be ever so still with no agenda except for light. And being this. They really come through with bells. They really come through with song and with stillness and silence. There's a reason why sacred places of mainstream religion over this Earth's massive timeline. There's a reason why churches, centers of prayer have this sort of angelic frequency. It's because of the silence, quietude, the stillness and the pleasure and joy of basking in mysticism of the light. Deeper beyond that is initiation for you on receiving max of greater authenticity, of greater alignment with you as a spiritual leader that is able to shape shift and seen in your light, perceived by all who become engaged with you your own angelic qualities, your own joy of stillness, your own inner silence being a blessing of the great divine life and the great divine light. And I'm seeing the stillness that has become actualized recently because of your resilience to truth and your resilience of challenges, pains, sufferings within your own intimate experience, but also on a larger cosmic world stage. And I'm saying that because of your faith and your resilience, your courage, that you're being initiated into communion with the angelic realms to remind you that you indeed carry these angelic qualities as we all do, but you're sort of activating 
a part of your soul's true nature. I'm seeing it as a color green. Part of your aura is sort of opening up into this layer of angelic quality that will help not only your higher path and your higher self to come back home, but also, again, the collective homecoming. We are all joyfully anticipating and are joyfully experiencing at the same time. Wow, thank you. There's a couple more questions coming. Okay. Next is uh, April. April, you're muted and uh, do you want to unmute? I can read your questions if you like. Can you hear me? Okay, good now. The top of my head has pressure often. Is that angelic energies? I would also like to know what my lineage is. is that Thank you, April. To clarify, it's a little difficult to hear. You asked about your crown chakra and what about it? It feels like there's pressure and burning. Pressure and burning. I'm seeing that's a symptom of what is that a symptom of? Let me see. Something wants to be released in your body and it wants to be released spiritually are there any sort of programs from your relationship to spirit creator source energy god goddess whatever your relationship with is with the oneness is there any past sort of program that is still running or that still has a sort of weight to your sovereign relationship with spirit either in this lifetime or other lifetimes it could be religious Would you like to clear that energy today? Yes. Wonderful. Well, with your consent, April, let's just take a moment to honor any intentions of human and divine contact in various lineages here on the planet that have created more institutionalized religious centers of union with source that are not serving this new paradigm and the new beingness of embodied light. So imagining April with me, <laughs> And seeing an angelic guide come in to assist, assist you named Fran, Francie, I believe. I'm getting the name Francie. And she's just going to help you now. And she's hovering around the right side of your head, the right side of your neck and your shoulder. So there's some sort of relationship on the right side going on. And she's sort of vacuuming. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
she is yes. sucking the spiritual religious programs of your life out from your chakras that are no longer serving your true relationship with source and your true power with source energy. And she is happily doing this. I see her with a big grin on her face and she's wearing purple. So she is of very high order. Purple being a very spiritual. My uh, favorite color. Initiatory color, there we go. And I'm seeing her just happily vacuum out all from your shoulder to the top of your head. And she's just allowing these energies to, to dissolve in Gaia's old timeline. And she's just allowing these energies to release from you. She's sort of unlocking, she's unlocking the, the chains, the spiritual chains that you accumulated in this lifetime and in other lifetimes. So she is not only releasing you karmically, but she's also releasing you physically from these programs of what communion with spirit is for your true experience. <sighs> So I'm just letting her do that continuously. Say that again. I'm letting her do this continuously. Thank you. And she says that it's done for now, but to use her as a guide or when you're feeling any sensations, any subtle energetic weight, there might still be some residue. There might be still something to clean in your home too. Usually when we clean out the higher spiritual chakras, we have to clean out our home too because it's such a representation of our relationship with spirit in this very subtle but multifaceted way. So I would just tend to even one corner of a room or tend to if you have an altar and reset it or clean up something that you mean to clean, even your car so much or your or a part place in your garage. And I'm saying that there needs to be this sort of physical action to solidify this energetic action. So just clean, cleaning up an area in your home that represents your crown chakra to you in some way. And intuit this. It doesn't have to be, you know, right, right, right in front of your face, like an altar or a corner of the room that's dedicated to the masters or any ascended beings or loved ones. It could be your crown chakra could be your kitchen sink. It just depends who you are. So I just give you trust and permission to, to just discover any other places in your life that represents your crown chakra and just clean it up. Thank you. Bless, Bless you. you. Well, man. Bless you. Thank you. Next question is from the chat textual chat from typhus 84 typhus 84 he says can you elaborate on the 12 races of elohim do you have any answers to that um, 12 races of elohim i'm seeing pink and red with that question so I believe there's a sort of awakening around this Elohim question and the frequency that this sort of 
energy is bringing into the consciousness. Let me see what else I can come on. I'm getting don't mess around with us. Leave us alone. I'm getting that too. I'm, see, I'm seeing that they're seeking sort of justice and right alignment. But anything other than that, they don't want anything to do with humans contacting them. Thank you. Uh, next is um, Cardi. Cardi, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, hello, Brooke. Hi, Cody. So I'm just going to read off what I said. So I've never given much thought to angels before, even during my awakening. Now I'm seeing them everywhere, especially in my channeling sessions. They're coming through a lot more, and I just want, I'm just wondering why now they're all coming in. <sighs> you said during Cody during your channeling sessions. Yeah, I'm a channel as well. <sighs> well, it's simply our trust. I'm getting and our faith in that they do exist and are among us constantly and all the time. It's a sort of the larger human psyche and spiritual experience is waking up to light frequencies and what's most common for people when they wake up to light frequency is to wake up to the angels. It's a sort of natural, not only natural spiritual connection to these sort of ascended bird-like people, but also psychologically, there's this huge healing in our wounding on the planet that many light workers are at the forefront of and so they're receiving these massive blessings of clairvoyance and clairsentience of seeing and feeling angelics all the time because we're dissolving fear frequencies at this rate that is allowing us to sort of melt into our higher selves instead of reaching so much or desiring to be in our higher self and kind of affirming our higher self, maybe more in a masculine, uh, penetrative way of, of that consciousness, if you follow, but melting into this sort of intrinsic consciousness of being on Mother Earth, and being on the planet, that sort of relaxation is allowing the angelic beings to come in at this higher rate. And I'm seeing that for you, Cody, in particular, there's a reason that you're seeing these beings at your channel. Do you have a sister? Um, I do, but not like directly blood related, kind of blood related through my mom, but I don't have contact with my mom. I just know that she does have a daughter. Well, she's an angel. That the angels are appearing for you to see humans more in their angelic state on a day-to-day -day reality and to practice your you know, we all do this in 
our spiritual worlds, we try to reframe everything to get a sort of new perspective or a new sense of peace or harmony with what is in the presence, what is the truth of now. And I'm saying for you to reframe this, this half sister or this sister being, this could also be a, a close woman friend as well, I'm receiving previously, formally or present to reframe the sister in your life as an angelic being. Cool, thank you. Next question was from uh, Dana Kilby. Uh, what uh, beings are here to assist me at this time with re releasing control of issues I'm having with my son? So releasing control of issues uh, Dana has with her son. It's a textual question, so there is no direct dialogue. I'm immediately before Max started speaking, I felt the presence of Arch angel archangel michael as a sort of helper for you to call upon to invite to your space to clear any obstacles or illusion frequencies or any sort of uncomfortable circumstances that are in your present karma, that are in your present timeline, to just call on our angel, Michael, to have a picture of him, either print one out or find one at a metaphysical store, and have a candle with him. Thank you. Um... That's all we have in a, in a, in a oh, okay, Christine. Greetings, yes. and, greetings and blessings to you. Um, I was wondering, um, I work a lot with animals, and I was wondering, um, is there a specific angel that is, um, that I could ask for help um, for helping with um, animals? Because I, I worry about their welfare a lot besides St. Francis? You know, St. Francis is one of my highest guides and <laughs> I definitely go to him. Okay. I recommend him for all animal healing connection, benevolence connect and, and more so, but okay. Let's see if there's anyone else that I know of. I would start with doing your own research on saints uh -huh. cross-culturally and seeing any that have sort of mythos with animals. Since you're already with St. Francis, I'm saying that that could be a way to start to build a team of animal guides. It almost feels like I'm getting that your, that one of your tasks in your Dharma, Christine, is to sort of have this team of, of ascended masters and angelic guides that are for the animals. Almost, you know, like I'm seeing pictures of, they do of all the different dog breeds. They have <laughs> all these next to each other in this big group photo. I'm seeing you like have this angelic team um, cross-culturally that have been well-known or not so well, well-known well in the world that support the healing of the animals. I have um, a crystal grid that I um, have been collecting um, all sorts of little animals, tiny little animals, and putting them around the grid and oh. um, have jasper carved uh, whales and all these other things. And I was wondering if that was really working because, you know, 
I get really distressed a lot, um, but I don't want to give up because I feel that this is my um, my higher self that I'm supposed to be doing this. It's um, finding help and aid for myself because I don't want to be caught in um, a depression. I I'd much I I want to keep giving. That's so I think part of my lesson is also how to give to myself so that I can continue with the energy. So um, I've, I've gotten my little skulls, mm -hmm. um, which I've charged up and I put them in my, you know, in my various grids and whatnot. And I'm, you know, I don't feel anything from them. I'm just going by faith a lot that, uh, that all of this stuff that I'm doing is um, all of this stuff, all of my energy is is doing right. Except every now and then I'll go to some angel cards that I have and um, I'll pull a, a card. Like yesterday it was uh, grace and uh, wisdom, and I was going, I was reading about them and going, wow, this is this is exactly what I needed to hear. So even though I'm not getting it um, a physical reinforcement on one and one side i'm using physical things like cards to tell me actually what i need to hear so it's sort of like i'm wondering am i going to go to the next degree where i'm going to start hearing it in my head or feeling it well i, I feel it in my body i feel Great love. Oh, you're starting to cut out for me. Uh, you said feel it. You're starting to feel it in your body, and you're starting to feel the love in your body. Oh, I feel when I um, am hugging the donkeys that I care for at the rescue site, and I feel great love for horses. Some of the horses, even though. The abused ones, they won't come near. I, I just have this great love for them. And um, I feel very fortunate that I was guided to um, work at this rescue site because I can't take home the donkeys and I can't take home the horses. <laughs> but I have taken home, you know, two dogs and four cats and, but in, and birds too. <laughs> But I just feel this great love when I'm around these these beings. Mm. I just can't hear them. <laughs> mm. You know, so I haven't graduated to that point where I could hear their thoughts. I just feel this great love. And that could be all I'm gonna get. And, and <laughs> so how to, you know, have how to you know, be aware of this desire to communicate with the animals, but also be aware of what is true and what is in the present moment and just dropping back into presence and presence and presence. Okay. Instead of going for the whole shebang or... Yeah. <laughs> where else will I go? Because <laughs> where else will I go? Once I start feeling or thinking of their um, thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do with all this information? <laughs> so I think I'll I'll stick with just the love. <laughs> yeah. I answered my own question. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Our higher selves do truly know, and it's just you know, meeting in sacred space to speak to these things, we sort of get that information as if, you know, we're pulling a card and we already mm -hmm. have this information, but we get it somehow in this, in this divine. Yeah. Way. Like right now, I could feel this divine love from the two donkeys, just mm -hmm. mentioning them, Larry yeah. and Louise. Yes. It's, it's really incredible to feel this love. Yes. Absolutely. That um, empathy. Empathy being your greatest, you know, spiritual tool and how I would focus on that. I would focus on how you can share that empathy with not only the animals, but also in the human experience, how you can share that empathy with yourself. 
kind of bring that empathy back into having, you know, softness, compassion. And yeah, yeah. For your, for your own reality. But also, yeah. you know, whatever comes up in human to human relationships and also sharing that because I'm feeling like the guides are saying share that empathy, share it, speak to it, activate your throat chakra, speak oh, to yeah. that love that you feel. People want to hear that. They want to be reminded that we have these just divine connections with the animal realm. And the more and more that we share that, the more that we heal with the animal kingdom and we provide a sort of human animal healing um, session, <laughs> I suppose you could say. Okay. <laughs> share that love. Share it, share it, share it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next question is from Connie. Connie. Um, I have been studying psychic development and we are in uh, we were in the mediumship section. Both of my practice partners have canceled practice sessions for several weeks. Do you have any ideas on why? I'm feeling that they're not ready and that it's not part of the their sort of present reality right now. It's something that they are desiring to practice and to engage in these frequencies. But something about their human self is, is still retracting and is still a little hesitant to, to embark on, on this newness. And I also think there's family karma restrictions for them too. Both of them. It's nothing about you, my dear. Is there anything else coming? Should we go to the next question? I'm just saying the color pink. So keep connecting with forgiveness and unconditional love for those that are coming in to your life in the metaphysical communities who are desiring maybe similar things as you we have similar belief systems, similar card decks, crystals. Continue to pr practice forgiveness if they're not showing up in your life that you desire. And continue to practice non-attachment and ultimate forgiveness because that's a lot of, I'm receiving a part of mediumship is you sort of have to be this channel of constant forgiveness, and constant allowance in order to completely get out of the way and let whatever information will come through, whatever spirit wants to come through, is to kind of cultivate this muscle of the whole body being a vessel of ultimate unconditional love and forgiveness frequencies. Thank you. Um, Amar Corona is asking, um, do you feel guided in general? I guess it's a general question. Do you feel guided or attracted to your destiny or uh, do you decree, do you create your own? Uh, I feel like uh, both, both as well as sense of obligation. That's the question. So, 
are you guided or are you <laughs> create your own destiny? I am Mara, blessed be. Hmm, what a beautiful quintessential, quintessential question of the spiritual pilgrimage. Hmm. Could you repeat it just one more time for me, Max? Oh, sure. Um, do you feel guided or attracted to your destiny or do you create your own? Uh, he feels, uh, Amar Corona feels like a bit of both, as well he feels a sense of obligation. And seeing this, this great alchemy within this question and this great alchemy within the spiritual sort of self-actualization. And that, yes, we do create our own pathway, our own place of how we can be of service, but it's also intrinsically already there. It makes me think of all these beautiful ancient divination systems of astrology, Eastern, Western astrology, and these new systems of knowing yourself human design, gene keys, all these systems that prove both points almost in a way that you are intrinsically born with these sort of dormant DNA and that as you develop, as you evolve, as karmas appear, as karmas get cleared, you sort of awaken the next level of that particular DNA and then you awaken it again in a different circumstance in the timeline and then another one comes into play and you start to awaken that DNA and there's a sort of interdependence this interdependent relationship with all these different DNA frequencies that you're awakening at different periods of your life so it can look like it's always been there, your true destiny and your true service to humanity. And it can look like it's never been there. That can look completely out of left field. But we get to certain points in our awakening that ultimately doesn't matter because we're trusting more in our intuitive fields and our knowingness moment to moment more so than this life trajectory of patterns and this life trajectory sometimes of linear time but yes there's richness and truth in these patterns of the self the patterns of self within the consciousness of oneness, and the patterns of self within the consciousness of the current collective evolution. Yes, there are definitely patterns. But how can we also hold the truth of being in our full intuitive aware faculties moment to moment as a sort of ultimate jewel, an ultimate tool in order to make discerning decisions around our destiny 
that feel expansive, that feel, that have a feeling of curiosity, that have a feeling of whatever it is your sovereign divine channel needs in order to feel expansive qualities. For some people it's different, for some people it's, it's joy, for some people it's uh, play, curiosity. For some people it's being in, in, in a very, almost a sort of serious service, in a mission base, a lot of um, indigos, for instance, and even star seeds too have this very sort of mission base and you have to keep, stay on track to this mission and when you're not on that mission it just really wipes us out entirely but some sometimes even the angelic you know going back to our angelic question i'm receiving that it's a different sort of destiny and that our kind of multi-dimensional embodiment presents different qualities of destiny that we can maybe you know, pick out and have the sort of you know, quantifiable perspective or evidence that when it comes to awareness, that sort of divine trust and asking constantly, asking your higher self, your higher guides or any deities that you're with, asking almost a sort of activating prayer for you to be in alignment your destiny and to be in alignment with the service. So I think whatever was just channeled through me, <laughs> the message is to keep in prayer and to keep in faith and to keep an open relationship, a sort of spiritual devotion to your higher self, to continuously ask, am I in alignment with my destiny? How can I be more in line with my destiny? How can I be in greater service? Because that's essentially asking Dharma questions. And although we don't have to ask them all the time, it is a great practice to develop and to have your consciousness hone in on this particular experience in each of our reality that is extremely important to the sort of consciousness on planet Earth is that we're actually taking action into asking our soul, our soul's higher question, taking it back to our own psychic sovereign fields instead of, for instance, going to <laughs> a psychic or someone to ask us or someone to help us on our soul's journey. It's that simply by asking the question over and over, we are opening more and more. And it might not be, you know, evidential. It might not have evidence at first, but I'm just receiving to keep on asking these questions constantly. And that practice in and of itself will bring us into closure, continuous closure, but also continuous empowerment on our tree path. Thank you, Amar. Uh, thank, thank you in the, in the chat. Uh, April, can you go next? Yeah, you can hear me. You're okay. Okay. I would like to know what my lineage is. I've been told different things at different times by my guides. And I would like to know, am I L? 
because I was told that my father is. My father told me he was. And, and uh, I'm curious about it because every once in a while I'll look in the mirror and I'll say to myself, I'm a pixie. <laughs> and so can you give me any thing about that? Is that what's going on with me? <laughs> Bless it be. I just want to make sure the first thing your guides shared with you was that you're an elf. Is true? L. E L. An e L. Yes. Oh, so I heard elf. <laughs> Which the elves like to hang out with the pixies. Um, so there's that. I am seeing very kind of, I'm seeing the green man. So I'm seeing the sort of nature spirits, elementals. I'm seeing a fire sprite actually right now. I'm seeing that the pixie and the sprite are so are sort of these qualities that you carry. And they're asking to be revealed more in your interactions with people. This playful, fiery energy that I'm seeing that you may kind of keep guarded or keep kind of a low, a low fire going. And I'm seeing that this question is ask, as actually igniting more of your fire energy in your body, in your fire energy in your soul, in your fire in your, your relating with other beings. And that sort of fire quality will kind of present itself through your mythic embodiment as a sprite, as a fire sprite. Sprites are fiery creatures um, that are a little mischievous, just a little bit, that are sort of pixie as well. They're light, they're light fire. Pixies are very light and playful and also Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Be, you know. Just release them and let them be me. Yes, absolutely. Release that divine fire of expression. They love to express. They love to be seen. They love to be heard for their truth, for their intuition, for their genius. So keep uncovering that and sharing that. Thank you. Um, Connie, Connie D uh, has uh, another question. Further, last night I had a dream where I had a where I had a, a dream where I had the path choice either to swim in deep dark water or to walk a path with uh, with roots and dirt thrown in the path and I chose the dirt path. I didn't feel fear. I don't see any question, but I guess the question was, was what does it mean? Could you describe it once more? All right, in a dream he had a choice to swim in the deep dark water or to go on a dirt path with lots of roots. Okay. And he chose a dirt path. Okay. What does it mean? Hmm. Actually, I don't know if it is he or she. I'm not sure. Most likely she, I guess. Well, I can, I can help a little, but my sovereign channel actually doesn't usually like to help with dream interpretation because it's so precisely the person's own psyche 
that I, it's helpful to guide people into identifying what these symbols represent to them. But let's look in here. Okay. The roots. Half of Earth. The water ultimately represents the unconscious and the sort of elements of Scorpio that we are about to go into Scorpio season in Western astrology. And we also have um, Jupiter in Scorpio that was just conjunct Mercury in Scorpio and Mercury in Scorpio will be uh, transiting until November 5th. So there's a lot of kind of messages and communication that was, we're, we're, we are receiving that are, that have to do with the depths of our unconscious, which represent water. So there is your depths of the unconscious representing this deep, dark pool of water. And there's also the earth plane that represents, in my channel, physicality, sensuality, that represents being in the body here on the earth plane. That means showing up. That means being on the path. That means walking towards your destiny. With your roots, with roots being shown, that can represent your lineage, your family lineage, your ancestors. Lineage that is being called for you to walk towards, to maybe see them soon or see them in the astral more, perhaps interveil communication as we're approaching Halloween and Samhain, which is the thinnest day of the veils. Let me see if there's any other thing that will provoke you to walk this path. I'm seeing home. I'm seeing walking home. Slowly but with trust. So, that's what I'm receiving the roots representing and the dirt path. That's what I'm receiving. But I totally invite you to journal and to keep on asking yourself what that, what that decision means for you. Sometimes dreams take days to percolate with the answer. Sometimes you will see symbols in your physical reality, as you know, synchronicity. Someone calls you up and says, I just pulled over to call to you and it's just on this random dirt road or something like that. So just Remember the stream, first and foremost, write it down. And it's a very um, archetypal dream. That's very helpful to remember and to reflect upon. Thank you. Is anybody in the live audience wanting to ask a question? Uh, Stephanie, Salish, Pete, Marlene? Christine, uh, April. I have a question. Go ahead. Actually, I have two great questions. Um, hold on. I have first one. I have a question that came from a friend of mine. Um, one moment. Um, anyways, I'll get into my other question. Um, my second question is: Is there anything that I am required to know from my higher self and or my spirit guides for training to my uh, soul path. What's your name, dear? Pete. Pete? Yes. Beautiful. Hi, Pete. Thank you for this. Hello. Hmm. Um. 
literally saw a lizard. Does that have anything? Uh, I had a connection towards the class group, um, a reptilian race from Draconis, Alpha Draconis. You're no longer affiliated with this? No, it was just a temporary assistance with ground, grounding. I'm seeing that wisdom that you just shared of temporary assistance with grounding. Earth creatures like lizards and snakes, turtles literally have their belly to the earth. And I'm seeing that being great medicine for your soul. And that the more that you ground yourself, the more that your soul's path is going to unravel sort of in this organic earthly way. Often I feel you are giving so much information from the astral plane that it's distracting you from your soul's true purpose and that this grounding literally walking on Mother Earth barefoot, doing nothing but standing on the earth, incorporating earth-based practices will help balance you out. Because the closer we get to identifying our soul's path and our purpose, the closer we get to really open this organic and orgasmic relationship with Mother Earth. So that's what I'm receiving is some information for you to develop, develop more into Mother Earth, lunar consciousness, connect more with the moon, connect more with maybe qualities that you may associate own sovereign channel of femininity, what that might mean, softness, slowness, time out of time, unstructured, unstructured time, I'm saying to be beneficial, to just okay. time that's unstructured, so you won't be able to create, but you'll be able to receive divine information, and not so much filter other people's information. And I'm saying to look into, to begin to incorporate practices of Egyptian alchemy, though. I'm seeing a particular dharma. Does that have any resonance for you? Yeah, it does, some of it does, but the other parts, I felt like that. I have my own particular reasons for being in Astro a lot. Um, but thank you so much for the assistance. It actually helped me a lot, most of it. That's a good. And I have a second question. I have it right here from a friend. Let's see. One moment. Um, my, here it is, my question from my friend that said, many of us that love Hugolo are now cut off because they put a price on all their content. They, are help, they were helping humanity shift. They assisted us individually. What happened and why have, we, have they changed? What I'm receiving with that question is that in my lens, in my channel, is that Lakshmi came into Hukalo. 
Lakshmi in the Hindu pantheon is the goddess of wealth, abundance, beauty, love, integrity, and sort of balance. And I'm receiving that Hukulo needed to balance itself out with its free service it's, it's had since its beginning and the sort of offerings that were completely donation or free based and that they needed to make a stand in the cosmos to receive energy back that they weren't receiving energy it wasn't a um, reciprocal sort of there was no homeostasis there and I'm receiving that Lakshmi kind of came in to balance and to bless everyone who's involved and that that's part of the new paradigm is that we're inviting equilibrium and we're inviting a sort of integrity of what we're providing for others. And this um, channeling for me, who I'm very in close relationship with Lakshmi right now as part of my own practice. This is free, complete. So there are still opportunities for people to join in and to receive. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for the questions. Um, I just would like to share it with like to a friend of mine to help out as a contribution. A donation. Yes, it is. Alrighty. Much love and blessings. <laughs> love to you. Anyone else? I would like you to clarify something. This is April. You mentioned a garage. I don't have one, but I have a very large double door shed that I feel a lot of energy around. And I was wondering if that is what you were picking up on that I need to cleanse. Um, who do I ask to help me to cleanse it? Mm. Because I have tried myself and I still feel that energy there. Mm. Well, my favorite helpers, um, particularly if it's a shed separate from your house, the fairies really like to help cleaning up those energy. Fairies. Fairies, yes. Sometimes uh, disorganized fairies <laughs> called brownies <laughs> get into our things and rustle things up and make them messy right under our noses. We have no idea why we lost something or why there's ants in the house or why, you know, our garage or shed is just bustling at the seams with stuff. Um, those are usually brownies that are being a little mischievous. Um, so bringing in more consciousness to you know, the potential brownies being in the house with fairies that are more clear, clear sighted and are clear hearted and want to bless up your space and to be in harmony with the earth. Because when there's brownie, brownies showing up and there's places of disorganization, that means that you're in disharmony with the earth frequencies. So you want to bring in more harmonious energies. And by doing that, you just bring in consciousness and we also you know, give an offering to the land you know, brownies like a little offering of honey um, or a symbol that means something special to you um, 
that represents you know that you you acknowledge that there's disharmony on your land or in your property or in your in your own energetic field and you kind of offer this to the brownies and then begin to well, thank you, know, you. That, that has been happening to me a lot i've always been very ambitious and uh, gotten things cleaned up and straightened up immediately mm -hmm. and i haven't been doing that lately mm -hmm. and i i've been wondering what energies were slowing me down mm -hmm. so i i need to talk to the brownies mm -hmm. and ask the fairies to help me mm -hmm. all right wonderful thank Yay. you so much <laughs> blessed be you're welcome bless you Thank you. Salesh is next. Salesh. Yes, hello. Greetings and namaste. Namaste. Okay, I have two questions. Um, first one, this is something out of the blue for me. Uh, one of the previous uh, calls mentioned uh, Kalask, the draconian energy. For some odd reason, I've been listening to or dipping my foot into that uh, channelings of Kalask and it doesn't resonate with me but I just am like to know why I'm dipping my foot into this uh, the negative side of the polarity well it feels like you have an an entity on your Crown chakra that you've attracted from. This happens to all of us, by the way, um, especially those that are more in the occult, esoteric realms and are diving into sort of the tunnel of the internet and the tunnel kind of syndrome, being super engaged on your laptop and. Um, that, that in and of itself can attract entities. So there's that to be aware of. And there's also to be aware of what that sort of web time is provoking in your own frequencies. And I'm saying that you picked up some entities that drew you into something of non-harmonious resonance and we're just going to clear that right now. Um, would you like to clear that? Hey, yes, please. And remind me your name, brother? Salish. Salish. Thank you. Okay. So, Salish, we're just going to imagine this great golden orb just coming as a sort of asteroid down from the cosmos gracefully, slow paced, this asteroid that's sort of coming into the stillness. And it's just hovering above your third eye, this golden orb. And it's hovering. And I'm seeing you communicate with this orb. I'm inviting the orb to act as a healing energy for you, a healing energy for you to release anything that is not serving your highest divine truth, your authenticity, divine love, and divine light. And seeing this orb bless you, moving throughout your upper chakras in this sort of milky way, just really slowly milking itself throughout your crown chakra, throughout your seventh 
your seventh, your sixth, your third eye chakra, and all the other tiny chakras of energy, vortexes around your skull and your throat. I'm seeing this sort of oil, oil quality now develop this oily golden light just run now throughout your entire chakra system blessing and cleansing and purifying any unwanted beings negative entities disharmonious frequencies to be released and dissolved into Mother Earth. I'm asking Archangel Michael to now come in and to upgrade your chakras. to a frequency of neutrality. And I'm seeing now Divine Mother come in to upgrade your chakras into a frequency of Divine Love. Breathing into her Divine Love. We re-nourish ourselves as if we were back into our mother's wounds. I'm receiving the energy of contentment. Bless. How are you feeling? Oh, absolutely cleansed. Um, it brought up another extra question regarding the Divine Mother because I believe I felt that energy uh, about over 10 years ago during a Reiki healing session when I woke from that session from an illness a disease I had which was alcoholism is it the same energy that was there then So it was Ma Ambema. And it leads to my second question, which was really, my, what is my connection with Kanesh and uh, especially Lakshmi as well? Hmm. For those that don't know Ganesh and Lakshmi, Ganesh is the patron of yoga and is the god of, how would you say it? He removes obstacles <laughs> in various ways and he's also a great protector to have in your house. Lakshmi is the goddess of beauty, wealth, abundance, balance, and also dharma. seeing the particular relationship of they being a part of Shakti, of they being part of the Supreme Mother, Divine Mother energy, and to connect 
with consciousness around Divine Mother creating these deities in form. Despite the various myths that Ganesh and Lakshmi each have that may or may not dispute what I just channeled about Divine Mother being the creatrix of these deities and saying for your particular connection, your particular healing is to know that it's all Shakti. That you have these two holy representations to work with, to sit in puja or to sit in daily prayer with. And it's your choice, your intuitive sovereign choice when to be with them. And of course you can be in resonance with the greater Hindu holiday calendar, Ganesh Puja or Lakshmi Puja. But know that you have choice in this reality, in this new paradigm of how you communicate with God, Goddess, and your higher self. I think is what I'm receiving to be the answer to the question is that you have choice, brother, and that you are safe. Thank you for your perspective. Yes, it does make sense to me. And the Divine Mother energy is very beautiful and over lovingly overpowering, if there's such a word, for when it comes to me. Thank you. Namaste. Next is Christine. Hello again. Um, I was wondering if you can um, give me an idea of who my guides are besides uh, St. Francis, because I would like to add them to, um, to my crystal grid. I, I like the images, you know, like um, if it's one of the horse people or um, anyway, can, can you give me an idea? Two guides are coming through. Mother Mary. Okay. I got my pencil ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's Mother Mary coming through. Oh. And Epona, which is a Celtic horse goddess. Oh, how cool. I believe she's a white mare, but there's a great lore about Epona and her goddess energy embodied in horse. That I would look at. It's E P O N A E P O N A. Um, we have um, we should be start wrapping up whatever time you wish to use for that, and uh, I invite some of your language. Uh, maybe a blessing in your language or something of that sort. Maybe a song, a chant. Thank you, everyone, for opening your hearts and being open to receive divine information from my channel. It's really a wonderful blessing and supreme honor to be here as a conduit, um, Mother Gaia, in service to the higher holy love that we are all remembering and re-engaging with on our own dharmic path. So thank you tremendously for this opportunity. Shri 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 Jai Lakshmi Jai Lakshmi Shri 
水，水，水，水，水，水，水，水，水。水水水水水水水水水，水水水水水水水水水，水水水水水水水水水，水水水水水水水水水，水水水水水水水水水，水水水水水水水水水。水水水水水水水水水，水水水水水水水水水，水水水水水水水水水，水水水水水水水水水，水水水水水水水水水。我们的啊，那啊，那我们的我的啊，那个啊，我的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊，我们的啊妈妈妈妈，一个礼拜哎，妈妈妈，一个一个拉布哎，去干啥？来一，你给呀，你去过呀，拜了。哎嘛，去呀，去，你去过嘛，一个，哎，该陪你过呀。一摘一枝，你给不变。一米几呀，过了大，爱几呀，在呀。自己也不，哎呀，在家，哎，自家。我们可以这样，哎，去比比，哎，好，哎，老黑，哎，酷，哎，哎，妈，哎，老黑，哎，妈，哎，母，哎，阿。哎，我的妈！一米，一米多，我妈的妈，一度，哎，没二遍是哪次？没二遍是谁？没有，没有，没有，没有，没有，没有，没有，没有，没有，没有，没有，没有，没有，没有。
Thank you, everybody, for the webinar. Thank you, Brooke. <laughs> Thank you for the viewers, uh, for your questions from uh, from the chat. Thank you for those who will watch us later. Thanks to all. And, um, <laughs> and now the commercials. So uh, Jim's uh, Galactic Reiki is on November 25th. Uh, N26, six hours total, and uh, you can sign up on hukola.org and um, join our workshop, meet us in person, and it is five nights of, and um, five days of total bliss in Sedona. We'll sit in circle, meditate, and walk out to the Sedona vortexes to do the earth grid work, so we, we'll, uh, Upgrade, activate, connect the vortexes, connect uh, the ground energies with the star energy. So that's the main purpose of the work. To register, go to hukola.org, click on the workshop registration. And that's all we have for Hukola. And for Brooke, you can find Brooke at uh, Facebook, Brooke Allison Underwood. And you can uh, reserve a private session with Brooke. And you can write email to brookeallison at gmail.com. And also this information is down below under this video. Thank you all. Thanks, Brooke. All right. We are stopping the broadcast. Have a good day. See you. Sometime very soon. Thank you, Max. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day. Blessed be, everyone. Thank you again, Brooke. Thank you, Max, for all your work. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thanks. 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 Goodbye. Hey.